On that table behind me is 13 years worth of evolution in the Vortex Razor lineup. In today's story, I want to start from the very beginning. So without further ado, let's take it back to 1986 where this journey begins. Back in 1986, even before I was born, the Hamilton family started Eagle Optics in the back of a Wild Birds Unlimited and they sort of ran Eagle Optics out of the corner of this other store where they sold an assortment of other optics and sporting goods. And in the early 90s, they progressed to catalog sales. Okay, so basically mail ordering stuff out of a catalog and they were also selling other manufacturers optics. Now it wasn't until the early 1990s that Eagle Optics, which we now know as Vortex Optics today, actually launched their first line of optics. Now it wasn't 100% their own brand of optics, they actually co-branded a Celestron binocular and it was called the Eagle Optics Ranger 8x42, which was a set of binoculars. Now if you own one of these sets of binoculars, you might actually spot the Celestron name on there too. Now fast forward all the way to 1999. This is when Eagle Optics introduced their very own set of binoculars and it was called the Eagle Optics Platinum Binocular Series. Now if you go on the Eagle Optics YouTube channel, there's still a lot of videos on there if you wanna go check out sort of the nostalgia, if you will. Now fast forward to 2002, that is when the brand as we know it, Vortex Optics is created. But up until 2018, Eagle Optics still ran as its own entity and it was only when Vortex Optics moved into their new headquarters where they're located today that Eagle Optics as a brand was dissolved. So from 2002 up until 2009, Vortex are basically building their business and you know filling out the product line with binoculars, rifle scopes and a whole bunch of other things. And in 2009, the game changes as we know it, and Vortex announced the first generation Razer rifle scope. Now that is the scope we have here behind me. This optic is the Gen 1 5 to 20 Razer rifle scope, the OG Razer if you will. This is also when Vortex introduced this Razer bronze. Now I hope the camera does a good job, but if you've ever seen these out in the sunlight, I love the color, it's not for everyone. I know some guys don't like the color. For me, I'm definitely in the pro razor bronze camp. This optic has some unique features and I'm quite honest when I say I've never actually shot with one of these optics. Now I've had this here for a while and I've had it upstairs and I've looked around outside in various light conditions and it's a solid optic. You know, the turrets feel really good. It's got everything that, I mean, let me put it to you this way. If I mounted this on my rifle scope today, I'm 100% sure I can still be very competitive in a precision rifle match. Parallax at 40 yards, everything's smooth, windage is still on the right, elevations on the top. There's the illumination, which is still sort of here on the back. And if you remember back to sort of the first Viper PST days, they also had the illumination at the back. Nowadays, we know that illumination is built into the side of this parallax turret here. There's still some soft plastic elements on the scope, a little fiber optic uh, indication, marking for where you are on your magnification range. And this really set the bar for rifle scopes at the time. However, time waits for no man or no scope company and you have to keep evolving. Now, if we fast forward from that December 2009, Vortex starts what is now a trend. They came out with the Gen 2 Razor, the 126. It's a low power variable optic for ARs, the three gun guys, you know, the Jerry Michelaks of the world, the guys with the fast race guns. And that sets the trend for what we now know is sort of their release schedule. So we'll get to that because, you know, there is a bit of a trend in this video. So June 2012, the Razor Gen 2 comes out in the low power magnification. And that next year and a half really set them up to announce the Gen 2 big boy 4.5 to 27 Razor in January of 2014. And that scope is unbelievable until this day. Now, there's two versions of that scope really. There's the 4.5 to 27 by 56 Razor, which we have here, which is this guy. And then there's also the smaller one of the two, the 3 to 18 Razor. Now, I have both of these. I love both of these. And both of these, until today, is uber competitive. And they're pretty well priced now, considering that there's an even newer model. I love the 3 to 18. It offers everything I need to be competitive in a precision rifle match. The only drawback to this optic is the fact 
that the 18 power might sometimes not be quite enough to get that pinpoint accurate zero. You know, I like zooming in all the way on my target when I'm zeroing and the 27 power really gives you that ability to do that. Having said that, pretty much after I zero, even if we're shooting a thousand yards or a mile, I'm generally nowhere near the top end of my magnification. So I generally back it off to about 16 power, between 12 and 16 power, depending on the type of shooting I'm doing. So for the money, the 3 to 18 Razor scope is actually pretty freaking money. Then it's another almost three years up until September 2017 when Vortex come out with their Razer AMG, the AMG American Manufacturing Group, a scope 100% made in the USA. Now the AMG broke away from the trend at the time because it was offered in black. Now fun fact, the AMG was actually the first proper you know, premium rifle scope that I bought from Vortex. I invested in the AMG when I built my first custom rifle, which was a 6.5 Creedmoor, and I was like, what scope am I gonna put on it? And I went for the AMG. Knowing what I know now, that was probably a mistake. I should have just gotten the four and a half to 27 Razor, but that AMG is a wonderful scope in my arsenal because I do own one now and they don't actually make them anymore. They've been discontinued. The advantage the AMG had over sort of the other optics or the other optics in the lineup, if you will, it wasn't a freaking tank. It didn't weigh a ton. So it's really nice optic if you want sort of that tactical style feel of optic without, you know, getting the weight that you get with the four and a half to 27 razors. Fast forward another three years to January 2020, Vortex come out with the Gen 3 razor, okay? The one to 10 by 24. Again, low power variable optic, game changer from an engineering point of view, what they were able to do in that package. Really, really incredible. I'm hopefully gonna get one of those. I've got a new little 300 blackout rifle coming, which I'm super excited for. I'm gonna tell you guys about that build a little bit later in another video. But that scope, again, spot the trend, okay? Gen 2 came out in a low power variable optic. Two years later, we got the Gen 2 in the big boy scope, if you will. And same thing happened here. January 2020, we got the low power version of the Gen 3 Razor. And lo and behold, January 2022, I think it was a little bit delayed due to COVID and stuff. Obviously, there was a lot of stuff that happened in the world. But in January 2022, we got the 6 to 36 by 56 Gen 3 Razor. And this thing is absolutely incredible. This thing is an absolute masterpiece. They pulled off again something here with the optical design. I've never been able to see bullets in flight like I have with this. And it's got something to do with the ability that it gives me to have sort of more depth perception, if you will. And as I said, you know, I can see my bullets flying with this thing like I haven't with any of the other optics I own. Now there's a couple of things that I'm still getting used to on the scope. The reticle has changed and that is something to mention too. As sort of we've progressed through the years, so we've seen different variations of the EBR reticle, the enhanced battle reticle. I didn't know if you guys know what that actually stood for, but we are now on the latest version of the EBR reticle. I do like the reticle, but for me, I've grown so accustomed to shooting the EBR-7C reticle, I'm still adjusting a little bit to the EBR-7D reticle in this guy. It is a better reticle because you can have finer holdovers, but I quite like that going to 0.5 versus this has 0.2s, so it is something to get used to. So if you're used to the EBR-7C, it will take you a little bit of time behind the glass on this to get used to the EBR-7D reticle. It's very much the same, just again, every version gets a little bit more refined, which is, I guess, a good thing overall. So not only has the reticle undergone many refinements over the last, what, 13 year journey, so has the rest of the experience. You know, everything has gotten better. The glass has gotten better. The coatings have gotten better. The parallax can now focus closer. Illumination is now built in. The turrets are better. Everything's better, even going to the unboxing experience. You know, I've got the Gen 1 Razor box at the back there. And opening that box to make this video for you guys is a vastly different experience than opening a Gen 3 Razor. And I'm a sucker for a well-presented package, you know. Don't clip that. <laughs> it is just, you know, you've invested a lot of money into an optic, it finally shows up and you get it and it's like, meh, you know, 
let me think back to sort of what my experience was opening my first PSG second focal plane. Vastly different experience than opening, you know, a new Strike Eagle now, for example. You get a throw lever, you get all the lacquer bits with your optic. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this trip down memory lane. I hope you may have found it interesting. I certainly enjoyed making this video for you guys. I'm hoping to do sort of a cool timeline effect with the editing, sort of like the last dance they did with the Michael Jordan documentary. So I hope you enjoyed that. Guys, please leave a like, leave a thumbs up. I want to thank Modular Driven Technologies, MDTTech.com for sponsoring today's video. I shoot all their chassis systems on every single one of the rifles that I own. They're absolutely badass and you're not going to regret checking out their website to breathe some new life into an old rifle or upgrading your existing rifle. Guys, thank you for watching once again. Love you a long time. See you in the next one. Bye.